For this video, I'll be walking you through how to create a simple custom reusable right-click contacts menu with the ability to auto-position itself and can contain sub-menus. I'll be sharing with you some cool CSS and JavaScript positioning tricks that you really want to stick around for. Let's dive in. I have here five buttons with class and label indicating where they should be positioned. And on the CSS side, I have simple style for them. And I am also positioning them fixed in the four corners of the screen and one centered. The hardest part about creating contacts menu is figuring out how to position them in your view according to where the click happened. This is why I have these buttons positioned in every corner so I can test various positioning techniques. I'll first create my contacts menu, which will be a simple UL tag, and I'll give it a class of contacts menu. I'll then go ahead and append it to the body, but first I'll set its inner HTML so we can see it. And it seems I have a typo on the element right here. Now I'll give it a very simple style just to differentiate it from everything else so we can see it. I'll first set its position to fixed and give it a white background, make it the highest element on the view with Z index with seven nines make it 150 pixels wide and position it top left with some box shadow so it can stand out. Now back on the JavaScript side, I'll set an event listener on the document for mouse move, which inside I'll be manipulating contacts menu left and top CSS properties with the event client X and Y. Client X and Y is the position of the mouse on the view and this should make the menu follow the mouse bottom right from the cursor. Now pay attention closely. When I am top left, it is all good. The menu is fully visible. When I move top most right, it is not, as well as when it's all the way to the bottom. This is what we need to fix first. If you watch my custom slider video, I spoke on how the slider thumb always stayed inside the track bar. And this happens because the thumb is being shifted to the left by the percentage of its deposition on the screen. Let me show you what I mean. I'll first need to get the size of the view, the window, and I'll just destruct the inner width and height from the window. Then I need to know what percentage of the view width the client X represents. And we get that by multiplying it by 100 and dividing it by the inner window width. Now I'll use that percentage of the information to translate the menu on the X axis. Now notice that as I move the mouse from left to right, the menu keeps shifting to the left. It starts from zero when on the left, and by the time you reach the right side, it is shifted to the left 100%. Although this seems to do the trick, it is not a solution I am going for because it is not how traditional contacts menu behaves, but it is a solution to this that makes the menu more flexible in general. A traditional menu will stay on the right of the mouse until there is no more room, and then it shifts to the left. We check that by adding the left position of the mouse and the width of the menu. Then in compare if it is more than the total width of the view minus the width of the menu. If that's so, I'll go ahead and translate it 100% to the left. We can even let it go a little more further right by not adding the menu width to the client X. I can do the same for the height, but first I'll create a X and Y variable, which will contain the percentage we need to translate the menu, and both starts at zero. I'll set both of them to negative 100%, depending on the condition met. Then I'll just set the transform translate on the menu. I'll play with it a little and it seems like it does not translate much on Y axis, but this is just things we can fix when I finish styling the menu. The reason it's behaving like this is because UL tags have margins by default and positioning takes in consideration the margin of the element. So I'll just bring back the width and height added to the client X and Y. We could even make the Y switch when the cursor is in the bottom half of the screen. Before I go to CSS to finish the style, I am going to create a function that handles the right click because so far we are just using the mouse movement to see the menu and that was just to test this. I'll first create a immediately invoked function that will return a function to assign to attach context menu constant here. 
So this function will be a closure. The reason I am doing this like this is to enclose the contacts menu element inside so you can't access it. And no matter how many times this returned function is called, it will always be interacting with the same contacts menu, hiding and showing it in a new place with different options if necessary. Remember, you never see two contacts menus at once, and depending on what you right-click on, different options are provided to you. And then this is how we make this menu reusable and dynamic so we don't have to create a menu for every right-click. The inner function will take an element that needs the right-click contacts menu, and I'll attach an event listener to it of contacts menu and pass a function called show menu. Now in the outer function, I'll create this show menu function where I first call the prevent default method on the event. What this will do is prevent the browser contacts menu from showing when we right click on the elements so we can show our own menu. Then I'll just copy everything we were using inside the mouse move event listener to this function. To try this, I'll go ahead and select every button on the page. And for each, I'll call the attached contacts menu function with the button. Now, if I right click on any of these buttons, we shall see the contacts menu show up correctly positioned. Now let's give it the ability to show the menu items. So I'll add a second option to the attach contacts menu function, which is to take an array of options to use to build the menu items. I'll temporarily assign it to the, this menu option here, which I access inside the show menu. And for each, I'll call attach option with the option. Now I'll create this attach option function where I first create a list item element and give it a class of context menu item. And the inner HTML will be the option label in a span tag. I'll attach a click event listener where I call the action and pass the option itself after I stop propagation. Finally, I'll append this item to the context menu. In the attach context menu call, I'll populate the array with objects where the label will be the button text plus item and number. So we can make sure the menu is different for every button. And on the action, I'll simply console log the option it was called with. I'll duplicate this so we can have a nice size menu. And it seems I need to fix the span string template here. Also clear the inner HTML content we had before. Now, the reason the menu items are always the same is because of this menu options variable here. Because this is a closure, this variable is the same for every call. It will contain the menu option of the latest button called, which is the center button since it is last in the HTML. To fix that, I'll call the show menu and pass the options instead. Like that, the menu now is unique per button. If I click on the items, we can see the options logged here in the console. What we need to do now is to hide the menu when the option is clicked on or we click outside anywhere on the page. And for that, I'll create a hide menu function. And here inside the show menu function, I'll attach a click event listener to the document and pass the hide menu. And I'll also call the hide menu function when the click happens on the menu items as well. The hide menu expects an event but I'll pass true to flag that we want to force close with this menu. So if E here is true, I'll remove the menu and remove the document click event listener as well. Always remove event listeners when you are done with them. Otherwise, if the event is not true, it's because it is the real event. So I'll check if the click happened on the menu or not by checking if the contacts menu does not contain the event target, AKA the element which received the click. Now, whether I click on the menu items or click somewhere else on the document, the menu goes away. To speed this up, I already have style for this menu. And we can see now that the menu looks much better and position itself even better because I removed the default margin from it. And another situation in which we need to hide the menu is when we resize the view. So I'll listen to the resize event on the window and call hide menu with true to force close it. And inside, I'll remove the resize event as well. This will not actually remove the resize event listeners because the function we use to set the listeners and remove it are two different instances, even though they look the same. So I'll create a bridge function called hide on resize, which simply calls the hide menu. But I'll need to turn this hide menu to be a function instead of arrow function so I can take advantage of its hoisting nature. 
because I want to call it before I initialize it right above here. Now for the bonus part, I'll show you how to add a submenu to it as well. I'll first go ahead and pass a submenu options to this, which will contain menu items of same format and I'll give them simple names. Now inside the attach option, I'll check if the option contains the submenu and it is not empty. Then I'll create another UL element and give it a class of contact submenu and then append it to the item element. I want to reuse this attach option function. And the first change will be to take the element, which to attach the option item element to, and I'll call it target. So instead of using context menu here, I'll just use target. Now for each submenu options, I'll call attach option with this new UL contact submenu and the sub option. I also need to change the call here inside the show menu to pass the context menu and the option. So what I did was turn this attach option function into a recursion function, which will continuously attach submenu items when they have submenus. If we try this, we can see the submenu show, but the style needs some love. Before that, I'll add a class to the context menu that will help position this submenus with CSS. And for when we shift the menu to the left, I'll give it a class of left to indicate that the menu is, is positioned left of the cursor and top to indicate that the menu was shifted up. On the CSS, I'll group context submenu with context menu so they look the same, but I'll have to override the position to be absolute and context menu item already have position relative. This is so I can anchor the submenu to the item that contains it. I'll shift it 100% to the right so the submenu sticks out. We can see that the submenu looks like the menu and it sticks out. Another advantage of using CSS with this is that the hover works great. The submenu shows even when the cursor is not on the top of the item, but on the submenu. Now we need to shift it to the left when the menu is positioned left. So when the context menu has the left class, I'll make it left zero so you can see the submenu. To shift it, I'll turn it in the X axis negative 100% and like that, it appears on the left side of the menu. Now we need to shift it up when the menu is shift up uh, on the bottom half of the view. For that, I'll set top 100% and then translate Y negative 100%. For when it has both top and left class, I'll just translate it negative 100% on both X and Y axis. Another detail on this is that we want the submenu to remain hidden and only show when we hover over the item. There's one final situation where the submenu will not appear right. Well, you will run into this situation if you have a deep nesting and or the view is just not big enough. Make sure your submenus are not too big or not deeply nested. We can do something to fix my situation here. I'll make sure I add the left class only when the cursor is past the horizontal mid screen point. So the submenu shifts earlier than the menu itself. Now, all this issue with this is that there is not enough view space and the menu is too big. Check the link below for the code with the final touch ups. And for more video like this, like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye bye.